with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hal Silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Toto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come a thundering hoofbeat to the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! All the way from St. Louis, the people in the wagon train have been busy making plans for their new homes on the rich western frontier. But now, the hardships of the rugged country were increasing. The trail for Eagle Pass was a hard one. There was less good-natured joking, a good deal more grumbling. Up in the lead wagon, young Mrs. Austin sat on the driver's seat, holding the reins loosely, watching the trail ahead and the walls on each side of the pass. Beside the wagon walked her husband, Jim. Come on there, you lazy critters. Get up there. Why don't you climb up here and ride a spell, Jim? I'll uh, walk. Horses got all they can pull out, all of me. Pass your rifle up here, then. Nope. Ain't it awful heavy, Jim? Sure it's heavy. Heavier and thin. It's just as heavy for the horses as it is for me. What's that up ahead? The end of Eagle Pass. Train's up there in the open country someplace, scouting ahead for trouble. Do you think we'll run into trouble, Jim? Maybe. Maybe not. Don't tell him. Get up there, you no good probate. Get up! I wish we had oxen instead of horses. Oxen are pretty slow, ain't they? Sure, they're slow, but they're stout. Stout in any team of horses. They keep going after horses fall down. I wouldn't trade one good yoke of oxen for all the horses in this whole outfit. Tried to tell the rest of them back in St. Louis, but they wouldn't listen. In such all fired hurry to get... Up there, on the side of the ravine. I see them. Redskins. They're on both sides of them. Indians! They're firing down them. Whip up the horses. Get out of this trap. Come on out. Now we gotta fight it out. We're after it. Rusty, get out of this canyon if you can. Oh, Jim, I'm afraid. And so am I, I reckon. I'm afraid we're gonna have to change our plans about that new home of ours. Oh, Jim! Here, you take this pistol. There's six bullets in it. You needed to save one. Oh, no. later when a man staggered into the cavalry outpost on Reed Crossing, ragged, half-starved, and exhausted. Captain Joe Kennison tried to question the man while the soldiers brought him clean clothing and food. 
How many in the wagon train? Uh, six wagons, Captain, and 27 people. Where from? St. Louis. Left there first week of May. Uh, could I have some more beans? Certainly. What's your name, mister? You don't look like a greenhorn in this country. Uh, name's Crane. Cheyenne Crane. I was guiding and scouting the party. Oh. I left that morning, rode beyond the pass, scouting for engine sign. I heard the shooting in the pass, and engines didn't leave nobody alive. Clean them all out? Yeah. Without a single engine, been hit. Incredible. Well, you see, the engines was at the top of the pass on both sides. They was barricaded by rocks and things. They just fired down until they got everyone. Then they moved in and set the uh, wagons on fire. We've been hearing of a number of Indian raids. Do you know what tribe made the attack? Well, I couldn't rightly say. They spotted me when I was riding back and chased me till dark. I lost my horse and been on foot ever since. You uh, going after them Redskins, Captain? We certainly are, Crane. But, uh... What? We're not familiar with that country. Would you care to go along as our guide? Care to go? I'm a raring to go. And if there's any man in this country that can take you direct to them murdering red devils, I'm the man. Good. You get some rest, Crane. My men will get you an outfit. I sure need one. And we'll march in the morning. <laughs> That evening, in the nearby town of Crystal Springs, the story of the attack on the wagon train was told again and again. The impending raid on the Indians by Captain Kennison's cavalryman was also discussed. I've always said, and I still say, the only good engines are dead engines. Well, I said there was 27 people in that party. Every one of them slaughtered, just like cattle. Uh, Them red devils will get a taste of their own medicine when the soldiers catch up with them. Sure hope they find the ones that done it. Oh, they'll find them all right. Cheyenne Crane's going to lead them soldiers right up the engine country. I reckon ain't a man in the West knows the plains better than old Cheyenne. That fella's a tracking fool. Tonto, the stalwart Indian standing in the shadows of the river camp, recognized the distant cry of his friend, the Lone Ranger and listened to the thundering hoofbeats as the great horse Silver drew closer. Oh, Silver, oh, boy, oh, steady, big fella. Hi, Kimasabi. Hi, Tonto. You come plenty fast in town. Saddle your horse while I tell you what happened. You bring bad news? Tonto, it's news of bloodshed and death to many of your people and mine. See, Judge Rennie told me these things, Tonto. Rainy speaks the truth. Well, if Indian attack wagon train, then not my people. My people good. Then not make war on white man. But the soldiers won't know your people from the other red men. The soldiers will ride to avenge the death of those pioneers. For many years, my people live in peace. Now their land has been invaded by other Indians who have no honor. They're not warriors. They're killers. Ah. Soldiers ride tomorrow? Well, Rainy said they'd march at daybreak. Marching in formation, it'll take the soldiers, oh, five days to reach your people. Oh, how do not take five days? Oh, you can be there day after tomorrow. Now, your people, they're being blamed for the crimes of the Indians who murder women and children. The Indians who are cowards and fight from ambush. Ah. Tell them to move their village farther to the north, to leave no sign. Uh, you stay here, Kimasabi? Yes, Toto. The Indians who ambush the wagon trains must be made to pay. Is that right? So go and warn your people. When you return, go to Jesse Rainey in Crystal Springs. He'll tell you where to find me. Uh, Be ready. Good luck to you, Tonto. Get him up, scout. At the end of the fifth day, the United States Cavalry Detachment, regimental colors flying in the breeze, reigned to a weary stop. Far from their outpost. Oh, oh. oh, they've given us the slip, Crane. There hasn't been a soul in this village for at least two days. Blame if I can say with this, Captain. Not unless somebody got here ahead of us and tipped them off. How many tribes in this country? Well, now I don't rightly know. Several, I expect. Mm. I was going to say. Well, these are the men we're after, all right. Otherwise, the entire village wouldn't have moved so suddenly. Not at this time of the year. Uh, look over here, sir. 
This will give you the proof if you need any. What is it? You can see how they left the village. Scattered in 40 directions. Every last one of them trailing brush to cover their sign. If that don't show that they was expecting it... It does, all right. Come on. We're going to search the territory anyway. We've come this far. Sergeant, divide your men into scouting parties. few days later, in the town of Crystal Springs... You hear the news? Them soldiers just got back to their outpost. Made a 12-day march up the ancient country and back. Yeah, I heard about it. Never once laid eyes on a redskin. There's something mighty fishy going on, if you ask me. Them red devils sure know how to van moose when the troops go after them. Uh, look yonder. Comes one of them now, pesky redskin. Husky-looking fella, ain't he? Had not even be allowed to come into these frontier towns to trade. For all we know, they might be spies. Spies? How do you mean? They come into these towns and snoop around and find out all about wagon trains going through, what they're carrying, how they're defended, and everything. Say, I'll bet you're right. Then they scoot back into the hills and wait in ambush for them. When the wagons get... Well, what do you want, Injun? Don't you know this ain't healthy country for redskins? Uh, Where me find just Rainy fella? What do you want with Rainy? Me want tell him that, not you. What? Why, you prowling coyote. You get sassy with me, and I'll bust you wide open. That's what I'll do. Uh, Maybe. Maybe not. I'll show you your blasted oh, you redskin. Oh, you will uh, yeah, give you a trouble. Uh, uh, oh. uh, uh, maybe you tell me where a fine rainy fella, huh? Well, well, sure. That's his place right next to the livery stable. End of the street there. Uh, hey. Uh, where is that? Here, let me help you up, fella. Where'd he go? That redskin. Why, uh, I guess he sort of wanted to see Jess Rainey about something. There he goes, yonder. Uh. You uh, going after him, man? No, I ain't going after him. <laughs> I'll take care of him and the others like him when the time comes. Yes, sir. What can I do for you, Indian? Uh, me, Tonto. Oh, yeah, huh? Well, now, how would I be able to tell Tonto from any other red skin? Uh, here. Uh, see. Other red men not carry silver bullets. And, uh, where did you get this silver bullet, uh, Tonto? Uh, from man who tell me... To come here and see you. You tell Tonto where to find good friends. Yeah, uh, come on, Tonto. <laughs> Your friend's camp is an hour's ride from here. I'll get a horse at delivery. There were no signs of other tribes near your village, Tonto. My people say that other red men live far to south, many mile away. I see. What do you make of it, Rainey? Well, don't add up. We know there's been more than one wagon train ambushed up in that country. We know that somebody's responsible for them killing. Yeah, we know that, yes. But it doesn't mean that innocent Indians should suffer. Meaning what? I don't think the people we're after can be caught by chasing them. Well, what? Well, then how? A trap works better. Well, how are you going to trap the murdering devils? I... By using the bait they like best. Bait? Hey. You don't mean a wagon train. Yes, I do mean a wagon train. This time, it's going to be different. Rainy, how many wagons can you get around Crystal Springs? Why, I don't know. Eight or ten, I reckon. Maybe a dozen. Why? Well, don't get them. Don't try to get them until you hear from me. But what are you... Right now, I'd like you to carry a message to the commanding officer at the outpost on Reed Crossing. Will you do that? Sure I will. Of course I will. Tell him the message was delivered to you by, well, by a friend. And Rennie. Yeah? Be ready to get those wagons you mentioned. Honor will come to you when we're ready for them. Now, uh, here, I'll prepare a message for Captain Kennison. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. In the headquarters of the outpost, Captain Kennison read the message delivered to him by Jess Rainey. There's another wagon train coming through. Oh, poor devils. If they knew what lay ahead, they'd... Well, I suppose they've got their minds made up to go west. Big party? Ten wagons. Doesn't say how many people. Message says they've heard about the trouble in the Indian country. Wants to know if we'll provide safe escort for them. Won't no redskins attack a wagon train while the soldiers are with it. Question is, how far can you provide an escort? Well, that's just it, Crane. If I could go all the way with these people, they'd reach their destination without trouble. But I can't. Sooner or later, we have to leave them to their own resources. Then... Yeah. Then they're at the mercy of some engine raiding party. When's this party coming through? A couple of days, it says. Well, we'll give them their escort as far as Eagle Pass anyway. Maybe a little farther. Hmm. Too bad you just can't send some soldiers with them all the way. Oh, that's impossible, Crane. Yeah, I know. How many soldiers are you giving them? For ten wagons? Well, a dozen men ought to be enough. Oh, that's plenty. Well, I'd better start overhauling my gear. What? You going with us, Crane? You bet I am. Just in case them red devils should show up. I don't want to miss a chance of getting a crack at them. Good. Oh, in fact, I might trail out tomorrow and ride up that way. See if I can find any sign of trouble ahead. The following night, old Jess Rennie appeared again at the headquarters door of Captain Kennison. Oh, hello, Jess. Come on in. Uh, howdy, Captain. Any more news of that wagon train coming through? Uh, yeah. That's what I come to see you about. Oh? What now? Well, the, uh, the fellow in charge, so to speak, he wants to talk to you. Well, where is he? With the wagons, a couple of miles east of here. Why didn't he come with you? <laughs> I reckon he'll explain that, Captain. You want to come along? I'll take you to the wagon camp. <laughs> Sounds funny he didn't come with you. He's not afraid of Indians in this country, is he? No, sir. I don't reckon he is. Don't reckon he's afraid of Indians or anyone else. Come on, we'll go talk to him. The wagons, with their high canvas-covered tops silhouetted against the night, appeared to be deserted when Captain Kennison and Jess Rainey rode up and stopped. Oh, oh, there. oh, oh, oh. oh. Uh, where is everybody? Looks like the place is deserted. Almost, Captain. Not quite. What do you mean, Rainey? The drivers that brought them out. I, I sent them back to town. What about the others? Where's the man you said was in charge? Uh, there aren't any others, Captain. And at the moment, I'm the man in charge of these what? wagons. A masked man. Just Rainey knows me, sir. Well, Captain, I'll watch for this man. I'll ask you kindly to hear what he has to say. Well, wait, you don't need to dismount, Captain. What in the name of heaven... Uh, here, Silver. Come here, boy. You come this far, sir. Would you mind riding a couple of miles more with Rennie and me? And what's all this confounded mystery about? Captain, I understand you've only recently arrived in this part of the country. Well, what of it? There are some things a newcomer can be told, some things that have to be proved. Now, be Silver, I'd like to prove what I'm going to tell you. Care to ride with me? Rainey, what the devil do you mean by bringing me out here for this kind of nonsense? Just what do you mean? If I was you, Captain, I wouldn't call it nonsense until I was a little more sure. Captain, we can talk as we ride. Will you come with us? Yes, I will. And if you're up to some trick, believe me, you'll pay for it. Get come on, come on. Get up. Get up. I still want to know what's the idea of all those empty wagons. The idea, as you call it, belongs to the masked man. I reckon he can explain it to you all right. But I've got a detachment of troopers ready to escort this train westward in the morning. Good. Good? What's good about it? You think I'm going to send my men out with a bunch of empty wagons? No, sir. But how about sending a few, just a few soldiers out with ten wagons loaded with your troopers? Huh? What are you talking about? All day yesterday and today, there's been much talk in Crystal Springs about a train of ten wagons heading westward. Been rumors to the effect that these wagons carry a great wealth of rifles and ammunition, many other valuables. Well, do they? 
Wagons are completely empty, sir. Oh. You mean empty so as they can provide more space for soldiers. That it? I've been in this country for several years, Captain. Long enough to know that the kind of men you're after can be caught better in a trap than in an open chase. Those murdering red devils. We made a five-day march to their village, but they'd skipped out. Somebody must have got word to them that we're after them. You, uh, can blame me for that. I sent them the warning. What? You? Why, of all the confounded gall... Because I know them to be a peaceful tribe. You wouldn't have been helping the cause of white settlers by killing off a friendly tribe. Peaceful, huh? Friendly my grandmother. The white men are coming west, Captain. They can use the friendship of the Indians to good advantage. I can't understand you. Your own people, white people, murdered like so many cattle. And you've got the nerve to prattle about redskins being peaceful and friendly. Granny will tell you that there are many peaceful and friendly Indians in this country. Yes, the masked man is telling you true, Captain. Ain't no sense in killing our friends. Now, is there? Why, what's your purpose in sending out these wagons loaded with soldiers? Do you think there's another ambush ahead? Yes, sir, I do. And a great deal of talk about the valuables in the wagon train. The men we're after hear of it. I don't think they'll pass up the chance to make a rich haul. You keep talking about the men we're after. You haven't once mentioned Indians. Do you think Indians are the only ones who would commit robbery and murder? Listen, mister, you don't know what you're talking about. No white man would be so... We know don't call them white men out here, Captain. But you, Mr. Mask Man, tell me straight just what you're driving at. Well, as I said before, I'd rather show you. Aye, Taro! Aye, A secret camp. Well, we can dismount here. Taro will take care of the horses, Captain Old Silver. Oh, 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 oh. This way, sir. Hello, Jim. How are you? Better. A whole heap better. Thanks to you and Tonto. Why, who's this man? Another survivor of the wagon train that was ambushed recently, Captain. What? I thought Crane was the only man to come through that alive. Apparently, that's what Crane thought, too. Jim, will you tell the captain your story? Well, they... They left me for dead along with the rest. Come to and wandered around half crazy, I reckon, for a couple of days. The Lone Ranger found me, brought me here. Him and the Indians and taken care of me. Wait just a minute. You call this man the Lone Ranger? Of course, did you know? I brought the captain here so that you could tell him about the men who attacked your party, Jim. Not men. A bunch of killing renegades, posing as Indians. Posing it? Do you mean to say they were white men? You care to call them white. Leastways, they wasn't Indians. Then Cheyenne Crane lied. He said he saw redskins. He also told you the attack took place two days beyond Eagle Pass, didn't he, Captain? Yes. Another lie. Crane rode ahead that morning to scout the pass. When we rode into it, they was waiting for us. Well, Captain? When Crane found out there was another wagon train coming through, he volunteered to go ahead and scout the country for us. He left this morning early. Now I know why. Another bunch of wagons to be ambushed? Oh, Jim... This time, a bunch of wagons to trap the ambushers. But the women, the women and kids, Captain. There won't be any along. When those buzzards make their attack at Eagle Pass, they'll find a dozen wagons full of our soldiers, more than willing to give them a fight. Good. It's the Lone Ranger's idea, and I'm going to see that it works. Jim, you'll be all right here for the night. Tomorrow, Rennie will send a wagon out to take you into town. Well, right now, I'd better get to town and start them drivers back to the wagons, huh? Right. Tell them to hitch up and drive to the fort. We want to get started for Eagle Pass before daylight. Two days later at the pass, a dozen rough-looking men waited restlessly. Maybe you got your information all mixed up, Crane. Maybe there ain't no wagons coming through at all. I tell you, there are at least a dozen of them carrying all kinds of new rifles and equipment. They're on their way here right now. Well, well maybe. Maybe they are. No, maybe about it. According to my figure, they ought to make it here sometime this morning. Look! Look yonder! Look at that dust cloud rising up! It takes wagons to make a cloud dust like that, and lots of wagons. They're coming. Come on, let's get into these engine clothes. I could ride out and meet them, tell them everything's fine out this way. No, you stay here with us. They're making good time. Ought to be here inside of an hour. Yeah. Well, anyway, I told them I'd scout ahead, and if I seen any sign of engines, I'd... Ride back and meet him. 
Remember you, gents. There might be anywhere as up to a dozen soldiers with this outfit, according to Crane here. We take them first. As the wagon train came closer, the men hiding in the rock could plainly see the uniforms of a half a dozen cavalrymen. On the far side of the wagon, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Captain Kennison rode closely together, hidden from view of the ambushers. And inside every wagon... A dozen expert riflemen waited tensely, watching through tiny peepholes for the first appearance of the attackers. Almost there, Captain. Right. When they open fire, they'll follow with a charge. They'll try to kill the soldier escort first thing. Uh, better have those men drop back. Sergeant, have the guard drop back to the rear of the wagons. You men in the wagons, on the alert now. Here it comes. Let him have it. Let them have it! That does it, Captain. They're ready to quit. Come on, fellow. We'll help round them up. Yeah, you'd never caught up with this. If that masked man hadn't lied about things, he was the one that started that rumor about a wagon load of new rifles coming through. I don't see how you figured that was a lie, Crane. There was a wagon load of rifles, wasn't there? Of course, you didn't know there'd be a fighting man in back of every rifle, did you? just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.